So, in the ancient world, there were people with fantastic knowledge. Where did that knowledge come from? The idea that extraterrestrial life doesn't exist, how ridiculous it is. It's become a situation where you're ridiculed if you talk about extraterrestrial life. The knowledge was brought by this Anunnaki. But it's more than that because it talks in some detail about how this Anunnaki interbred with humanity, creating a hybrid race. And it's clear to me that we have been misled and we've misunderstood the difference between the gods, symbolically extraterrestrials in the ancient world, and God, which is all consciousness, all energy, everything that exists. They talk about, according to his translation, that a planet called Nibiru, the planet of the crossing in his translation of the Sumerian, uh, came into this solar system uh, a vast, vast amount of time ago. There was a Martian race, which was the white race, which actually came to the Earth and was interacting with the Earth, but as a result of the devastation and destruction of Mars, actually came here because it needed to survive. Uh, and this white Aryan Martian race based itself in the Near East, what we now call Turkey, Caucasus Mountains, um, Iran, and that sort of area. In short, we have an extraterrestrial race in that area interbreeding with humanity, creating hybrid bloodlines. But along with this white Martian race was what um, UFO researchers have called a reptilian race. And it's this reptilian race that also interbred with humanity, and I think the reptilian race were the Anunnaki. When the first interbreeding took place, the hybrids were half human, half Anunnaki, I think reptilian. And they interbred with this Martian, um, the race that took over the world in effect. When a second interbreeding took place, it wasn't between the Anunnaki the reptilian race and the uh, humans, it was between the Anunnaki and their hybrid bloodstreams. So now we're going 75% Anunnaki reptilian, 25% human. These bloodlines, the, what I will call the, the pure bloodlines, the pure hybrids, these are the ones when you trace in, into the modern world that turned up as the pharaohs, as the ancient kings of Iran, the so-called serpent kings, that became the aristocracy of Europe, that became the royal families of Europe, and through the great British Empire, became the presidents, business leaders, bankers of the United States. The reason that these families of the Eastern establishment of the United States that produced the, the people that run America, and the European aristocracy and royal families, the reason throughout history that they have obsessively interbred with each other and not outside is because they're trying to hold this genetic structure and a tussle took place between these two races and eventually the reptilian race through their bloodlines took control and now control the world so when the sun changes we change we are encouraged at some points to be open to more aggression or more this or more that now if you know that and you know um, that at certain times the mass consciousness is more likely to react in a certain way. Then you know, as you're manipulating the world, when to have your wars, when to have your economic collapses. And this is why, as many researchers, not just myself, have established that these events tend to happen in key years relating to sunspot and sun energy um, cycles. NATO is a wholly owned subsidiary um, of this brotherhood, this group of bloodlines, the reptile human bloodlines, the hybrids that run the planet. The city of London is, is the operational epicenter of this global web of manipulation.
there's very strong evidence that the pyramids in uh, Egypt were built around 3000 BC. And they built pyramids. What have they found on Mars? Pyramids. The, the uh, symbols of the modern secret societies that control the world to this minute are the symbols of ancient Babylon. In that ancient time is that you had the positive use of knowledge and they created mystery schools and secret societies in Egypt and elsewhere to pass this advanced knowledge on in a positive way. They, you then had this other force largely out of Babylon that also created mystery schools and secret societies for very different reasons. To pass on the advanced knowledge only to um, the chosen ones that they chose and they created the institutions, these same secret societies, in the public arena that sucked that advanced knowledge out of circulation. Eventually, and people like Manly P. Hall have documented this, that negative use of knowledge, that negative structure of mystery schools and secret societies also infiltrated eventually and took over the positive mystery schools and secret societies. So we reached a point eventually where knowledge was passed on only to the few at the highest level who had a malevolent intent and it was sucked out of the public arena big time. So the structure today is basically this. The epicenter and operational level is in London. That's where the global agenda is decided. And in these different countries like, the, like America, the United States, uh, South Africa, etc., you have bloodline branch managers, as I call them, who run those particular countries in line with the centrally decided and coordinated agenda. The world is controlled, therefore, by a very, very few people. Uh, one of the common themes of these bloodlines uh, through history is blood drinking, satanic ceremonies, etc., etc., human sacrifice. That's what this guy was into. They built pyramids in Egypt to interact with the energy and to create a particular energy field. They did the same on Mars, it would seem, also. To summarize this first part, we had the intervention in the human genetic stream in two ways. First of all, cataclysm to Earth settled themselves in that Middle Near East area. Not least because um, during the cataclysm, the only way to survive was to get to a very high place. Agriculture started at 10,000 feet and more. But complicating what would have been a normally a simple story of Martians coming to the Earth, a white race, was this Anunnaki, this reptilian race that interbred creating particular bloodstreams that it could connect with um, and therefore control. And it's these reptilian human bloodlines that became the bloodlines of the aristocracy and the royal families and the key establishment families of the world which today, to this minute, still run the show. Everything that exists is energy. When you resonate energy to a certain frequency, that affects us in a certain way. You can look back at the sun cycles, for instance. The sun cycles affect us in different ways at different points in the cycle because it is a different vibration of energy. It's a different type of energy. In fact, it's the same energy, it's just a different expression of it. If you know that knowledge, then you can use it to affect consciousness to resonate, for instance, the energy field of a city in a certain way, which helps you to bring about your agenda and helps people to uh, react and to be in a certain state of being, because they keep being affected by this repeating frequency. Why did they put that there? Because it was part of an emerging geometrical pattern in the street plan of Paris, which resonates the energy of that city, that key city to this brotherhood, um, and a certain vibrational range which they want to happen. Uh, the deity in the modern world today that they use to sacrifice them to is Moloch or Moloch. How do they symbolize Moloch or Moloch, this deity to which they sacrifice children? They do it, uh, symbolize him as an owl. Now when I was looking in the street plan of Washington, this is not in Talisman of the United States, this just caught my eye as I was looking through a Washington street map, um, I found this around the Congress building. There's a Congress building in the middle. And just by drawing um, in red pen on the roads within the Congress building complex, very obviously an owl appears. 
Now, they um, build these buildings in specific designs. This is where you see obelisks and domes everywhere in the major cities. It's because the dome resonates and draws in female energy. And for obvious reasons, the obelisk, the phallic, draws in male energy. But why are gargoyles in Denver Airport? Um, a modern airport built um, uh, controversially and for an enormous amount of money uh, in more recent years. It just so happens that those that research into these things, into the extraterrestrial um, influence on Earth, have designated that and has some of the people involved in its construction as a reptilian base, an Anunnaki base, um, actually in Colorado. Again, you go back into the ancient world, you see the same thing reoccurring. The floor is black and white squares. This is a policeman from England and I've noticed in America you see the same thing the black and white squares on the uniform and, the, and, and what have you that is to um, indicate the uh, Freemason um, secret society although most policemen don't realize this now this is Westminster Abbey and the same you'll find in Notre Dame and these other so-called great cathedrals of the world the floor is black and white squares why because the same brotherhood that uses this symbolism built the things and controls them um, to this uh, very day all over the uh, major companies of the world, banks and what have you, you see the Brotherhood symbol. Atlantic Richfield Oil Company, and there its symbol, the pyramid with a capstone missing, looked at from above. One of the um, classic symbols. Chevron. What you need to do to see the symbolism of this is to see this not as two one-dimensional ticks, but as um, two three-dimensional boxes, one on top of another, which is very um, symbolic in the secret language. One square on top of another square in any um, form means we control all that is right and all that is wrong, all that is positive, all that is negative, all that is just, all that is unjust, all, all that is this, all that is that. We control everything. Um, and so that's what that's saying. And the House of Lorraine um, has been a, a real home for the purest of these reptile um, Martian or reptile human bloodlines. The British royal family, the Windsors, are one of the most identifiable of these uh, reptile human uh, bloodlines that have been controlling the world. She realized that they'd drawn her into the Windsor web because they wanted her genes. They wanted to fuse the Windsor genes with the Spencer genes to produce a, another a version of a, a genetic hybrid. Ah, this is the queen here, a, um, an ancient reptile human bloodline. But we've come from the ancient world and seen these bloodlines expand their power to the point now where they control the planet. And so here we have a situation now where Diana, goddess of the moon, is taken into an ancient sacrificial site to the goddess Diana, dies in a tunnel which is called Bridge or Passage of the Moon Goddess and is also covered with crossroads to the goddess Akati, which is the malevolent um, symbol of the moon energy. There's no way that car hit the 13th pillar given the obsession with symbolism of this brotherhood unless it was meant to happen. Um, and there, I've been to Paris and in that tunnel, the Pont d'Alma tunnel, there's 30 odd of these pillars. It hit the 13th. The 13 is the number that reoccurs again and again and again and again, constantly over thousands and thousands of years in all these different brotherhood groups and all these different secret societies. And it relates in part to the 1 and 12, that symbol again of the sun and the, the 12 um, months, the 12 um, areas of the zodiac. Um, Diana actually survived the crash, uh, all reports say that, um, but instead of being taken to hospital where she could have got treatment that could have saved her life, she was held in that tunnel for a very, very long time, about 95 minutes from the crash to get her to hospital, by which time she was clinically dead. And so we have a situation in which um, Diana was held in that place for all that time and she was clinically dead by the time she left it. And the question has been, even from people who have said, yes, it was an accident, why did they do that? 
because according to the strict and obsessional symbolic ritual of this brotherhood she had to die in that underground chamber on the site of ancient Diana worship and sacrifice to Diana there's no way she was going to be allowed to leave the tunnel until she was dead and so they kept her there all that time when um, most doctors um, as they some have pointed out would have had her a hospital as quick as possible and she'd still be alive today almost certainly this area of Paris with the um, Eiffel Tower uh, the River Seine is an ancient ancient um, sacred site to this brotherhood and uh, it's absolutely no coincidence that this is where they brought Diana to die that night the last night in Vancouver when I did the, the last talk the guy came